I think the bicycle is the simplest solution to the world's most complex urban problems. You know, there are so many things that we need to do together. And I think the time is now, if we can do that, uh, then uh, yeah, we're being um, change makers. And, and that's, we, we can see, I, I, I want to say, we can see the change we want to see, basically. Hey everyone, welcome to the Active Towns channel. I'm John Zimmerman, and that was Maude DeVries, one of the co-founders of the Bikes Organization, that's B-Y-C-S dot O-R-G, and that's the group behind the Bicycle Mayors uh, Program and other really fascinating initiatives to help bring uh, more cycling to more cities globally. This really is a global initiative. And uh, hey, without further ado, let's get right to it with Maude. Maud, welcome to the Active Towns podcast. Hi, John. I'm delighted to be here. Well, why don't, why don't we do this? Um, to get us started, uh, why don't you just provide a, a quick introduction of yourself and uh, how uh, you, you came to be part of the, the, the BYCS organization? And I think you just call it, pronounce it bikes, right? We pronounce it bikes, yes. Yeah. It's as simple as it is. It's as simple as yeah, it is. And, uh, it was a couple of years back, you know, I think around six years back, something like that, uh, when we were talking about this world where, you know, we live in Amsterdam, where where it could be more um, like cities that, that would focus on the bike and, and that led to city transformation. And we were talking about this big dream and thinking we should do it now, you know, uh, otherwise it will not happen. And that was the start of bikes and um I have two uh, co-founders right now, and I am uh, the CEO of the organization. And right now we do have a foundation here, a global foundation, and also a foundation in India. Uh, and we're also looking to expand to Latin America. Um, but we have a small team, of course, like it is. Yeah, yeah. So what's the difference between uh, being sort of an advocacy organization and being a foundation? Yeah, to me, you know, foundation is just a, a, a way to organize. And for me to be in an advocacy organization or, you know, we focus on, on building communities and networks and, and sort of seeing how we uh, might help other people actually uh, make a lot of progress there. Uh, I think that is, yeah, uh, yeah, that might be the difference. But, you know, to me, it's all the same. It's one big ecosystem where everybody uh, connects with everybody and we all together see how we can make the, the big change happen. Yeah, yeah. I remember a few years ago when uh, when bikes really got started, and and I started skiing, seeing all of the uh, the the media coming out and the images coming out, and I noticed that India got engaged right away. Uh, that's really? fascinating and very very necessary. Talk a little bit about how important that is that India, you know, became a big part of bikes. How it happened actually was like uh, we were organizing, we were uh, organizing a summit in India and in Bangalore, and then we were announcing that. And by that time, uh, more and more people uh, who were already were really active um, were becoming part of the network. And, and because of that, and because of that summit, I think at that moment, uh, the change really happened. People came together and said, you know, this is what it is, basically. Most uh, bicycle mayors in India are like really, really good uh, change makers, but they also have uh, their own good lives. But they say, you know, uh, our children, for our children, it's very hard to live a good life uh, in, in Indian cities because we all know what happens huh, with the air pollution, for example, with the health and the heating up of the cities. Uh, so we came together and then they said, you know, this could be a big change. We need this uh, here. And then what happened afterward was um, COVID came. And basically, I think what happened then, and that was not only India, but that was around the world, of course, uh, people uh, stayed in their houses and, and we saw the air was getting cleaner and things were changing. Uh, and of course, we were really aware that we couldn't be behind the computers the whole day and we had to sort of exercise. So I think that. Then uh, we all realized that cycling had to take off. And uh, so uh, our organization in India had many conversations with the health minister, but also yeah, with, uh, with other people really being active. And they all felt like, yeah, this is the change we want to see for India. And so we are working with other organizations as well in India to make that change happen on the ground. And that is a really exciting journey. 
Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. And uh, your organization. Um, so, what year did it get started? When when the year you mean? Yeah, yeah. What year did uh, did you found? 2017. Two thousand sixteen, two thousand seventeen is when we started, Got and it. then it started with uh, the network started with, because you're showing the uh, the video right now uh, with the bicycle mayors. The network started with one bicycle mayor in Amsterdam, and then. Okay. Uh, you know, within, I think, one and a half years, we had about 15 bicycle mayors and we were meeting in Mexico City. That was the first summit. And then it was a global summit. And then the second one was later in 2018 in Bangalore. And then also and we were doing that in more geographies as well. Right. In right. Europe as well. Yeah. Take a moment to explain uh, what you mean by a bicycle mayor. Yeah, that's a good thing. I mean, like a really good bicycle mayor, and we have quite some, uh, is a change maker. So it's a person in the city who thinks, you know, the city can do better uh, using bicycles for transform transforming these cities. So it could be an activist, someone who's really uh, been been around for a couple of years and, and working on the change. It could be also something like Catalina here in, in Amsterdam, who is... Uh, uh, yeah, running a school basically, and she sees uh, children um, that could uh, sh and should move more, you know, and also obesity or difficult problems, you know, that they want to tackle. Puja from India, for example, is always talking about inequity or, you know, uh, air pollution, for example. So, topic by topic, let's say, but it's someone that can really bring together a lot of people and excitement around. Uh, cycling and make it happen and also is it he or she is a good connector you know and uh, uh, and also works with the city government and also other organizations in their own city and why the network is so important is that um, yeah you know as a bicycle mayor you're more than the bicycle mayor of your city let's say because you're part of this network where you also help other bicycle mayors grow or you give examples. For example, Satya from Bangalore, he created the Relief Riders. And then hey, when COVID came, so there was a whole program about uh, relief, uh, bringing relief to the people. And then it was copied uh, just really quick to seven other cities with seven uh, bicycle mayors. And then it grow even more, you know? So be, uh, being in this network and, and where one particular bicycle mayor does something, it can spread to other bicycle mayors as well. For example, another good example is Arely Carrion. Uh, she's the bicycle mayor of uh, Mexico City. What they just did was it was incredible. They changed the law nationally, not only Arely, but also her team and a lot of really uh, hardworking people that have been fighting for this for, for years. And now, you know, uh, we see that this is something that will not only happen in in Mexico, in Mexico, but also around the globe, I think that really aspirational um, example of something that could happen. And now she is doing a project which is called Biti Caterinas. It's a thousand uh, single moms. They get to have like an electric bike that they fix and that they can then use for a year to make sure uh, that the mom can get a job that she can take the kids to school, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, so or hey, oh, different ideas or things that they're good at uh, for a certain amount of time is what they're doing. And they're always uh, independent from, like, let's say, uh, governments or uh, certain organizations to do the work the best they can. So they're not, they don't have, they don't see walls. They just want to do something good for their city with other people. So they're just in it for that. Fantastic. And what's the process of uh, becoming a, a bicycle mayor? And, you know, how, how does that all work? Yeah, it's like twofold. Either um, uh, a city organizes um, a uh, city organizes a competition, so that could be the case, and then people can apply, and then there's a whole process in place, and then there's a, there, of course, there's a nice finale. Or uh, in a city, people could say, you know, I think I could be the bicycle mayor and I want to devote my time for at least the next two to four years to being a bicycle mayor of the city. Then they can go, go through a process. So they uh, go, come to us and they say, I want to be the bicycle mayor of this city. Uh, and then uh, they go through this whole process and then they have to put in um, letters from other people saying that they should be the bicycle mayor. 
uh, for us to know, because of course we cannot be anywhere. So we, we need to know from other people in that city if that person uh, is the right bicycle mayor there. Right, right. And I'll just scroll up here a little bit and you get a sense yeah. of, of the network map and and mm-hmm. truly a global initiative with representation, you know, all all around. And again, yeah. you, you see that cluster in India where you, you got <laughs> lots and lots of interest there. Um, so let's go back to, to one of your very first statements that you, you talked about as to the initiative of getting started with this. Um, you mentioned, you know, uh, to, to try to help make, you know, Amsterdam even better. You know, obviously from a North American perspective, when we look at Amsterdam, oh, yeah. we're like, oh my gosh, this is near perfect. <laughs> what? <laughs> Talk a little bit about that spirit where you felt like um, it, there was still room for improvement and room for a new type of fresh approach at this uh, versus you know, the, the established organizations that are already there that I know that you're still, you're kind of working with because I, I look at, I look at the partners that you have and they're listed as, as partners as well. Talk, mm-hmm. talk a little bit about that. And then we'll, from that, I think it, it may, would then help people understand that, uh, you know, as to how this might apply to their city. Yeah, yeah, of course. So what we have in Amsterdam, for example, is what we say sort of is adulthood, you know, after 50 years of cycling in Amsterdam, we reached a point, I think, where sometimes people think cycling is a problem. And it's not, of course. But if 70 percent in the the city, 70 percent of every daily trip is on a bike, then people can tend to sort of think, you know, we should make a difference. But, you know, sometimes... It's so not special in Amsterdam that we don't think of it in the right way. And that's why I think it's very important that we keep on doing the right things here as well. Because if you think about technology, if you think about mobility as a whole, and the bicycle is to us is a transfer, is a trend, is a, is more than transportation, it's transformation, you know? So, and if you think about it like that, then you wouldn't start with talking about electrification of, or stuff like that. Then you would be talking about active mobility uh, as a change maker for the city. But basically, I think what is very important is that we shouldn't lose that. So that is what we have to fight for in Amsterdam, which is difficult then with you, for example, but, you know, it's difficult than uh, any other stage in any part of the world you know so i think we should all learn from each other it's very important that uh people don't try to make their city like amsterdam because they are not you know but potentially we think every city is a is a bicycle city it has the potential to do something like that and 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 then of course cities can look at each other and learn from each other and that is what we do via the Bicycle Mayor Network. And then the Bicycle Mayors can inspire their city governments and, and help them really um, towards this change, you know, whatever, in whatever way they feel is the best way. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And I pulled up this uh, this little uh, video here that's uh, out on Vimeo, and I'll make sure to have this uh, link in the show notes and in the video description uh, so that folks can you know take a look at this. Uh, there is some music to this, but I kept the music down uh, so that we could talk right over it and, and see some of the, the images in the background. So it, it sounds like this is really uh, about trying to identify um an individual, a, a change maker that can sort of help support the change that uh, that we'd like to see happen within our communities. And it, it, talk a little bit about the evolution of the organization from that initial very first <laughs> bicycle yeah, man yeah. to where you are now, because I get a sense that a lot has sort of transformed and changed over the years. Totally. So, of course, uh, the Bicycle Mayor Network is one thing that Bikes is doing and we are doing many more things. But I think um, if if we just look at the Bicycle Mayor Network, we're now also developed, we have developed and launched a a citizens network, for example, because we see that more than one person in every city, of course, is involved. And uh, yeah, we wanted to sort of help them in any way as well. Uh, So that's why we set up more networks. But we also, since that first a bicycle mayor saw um, and learned what they actually need and how they could grow and, you know, how we could help um, uh, change that or how, which connections we could give to them. So, uh, in the, uh, uh, yeah, I think if you look at our latest uh, reports, for example, you can definitely see that 
uh, in the beginning, of course, it was very hard because we were talking to people and saying, hey, do you want to become the bicycle mayor of a city? And they were saying the what, you know, they didn't know the name bicycle mayor. And I think over the years that has grown a lot because we've had so much publicity everywhere, you know, so people know what bicycle mayors is. And then there was also this discussion about the name. People said, you know, you shouldn't call it a bicycle mayor yeah, because, you know, uh, there already is a mayor and sometimes that's frustrating. So we sort of said, you know, if you need to call it a bit different in your city, that's also fine. But the program is called the Bicycle Mayor Program. And the reason for that is uh, is that it really makes it easier for bicycle mayors to connect to other people, for example, in a government, or that it has a bit of status, you know, and that we need. And I think if we if we think about the humble bicycle, bicycle, you know, as a as a thing, we need a bit of boldness uh, in that thing. So I think that was really good. And then we added like trainings and uh, network development and uh, you know regular meetups and uh, the summits. Uh, for example, when we could organize them before COVID, we did that live, and later on we did uh, you know online summits. Um, but also the help, uh, the individual help yesterday. For example, I was in a conversation with Nazir Halawani, he's the bicycle mayor of Tripoli, for example. And he was telling me he started a, a bicycle courier service because you can imagine in Lebanon, they have had so many things to tackle, you know, after uh, what happened with the, um, uh, with, with the explosion and also uh, with the, this country is in such need you know and and i think it's amazing when a bicycle mayor really changes that and then we come in and sort of say hey how can we help you know so and then we have this conversation and see where we can help so then it's a sort of one-on-one relation where we try to help the most we can yeah yeah and i love that transformation too that evolution that has taken place where uh rather than just focusing on an individual, a bicycle mayor, it's like, okay, how do you get an entire bicycle citizens network, you know, really yeah, engaging yeah. a bigger group. And you mentioned the training and the, and the, um, and the development, the, per, you know, the professional development, you know, helping people understand, you know, how to move the needle from an advocacy perspective. And, and that's obviously a big part of this. Totally, it is. And I think it's very helpful for a lot of people as well to have that and also to help out each other because some of them are really active in cycling or, you know, know a lot about it. And some people know a bit less about it, but it doesn't matter, you know, because they come from a different perspective. And I think also after two to four years, when someone goes and becomes a new bicycle mayor, it has a fresh and new look at, uh, on how the city could be better. So that is a really good thing. And I think... Um, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, you know, so, so basically I think, um, that there's a lot to learn from, for, for, for all the bicycle mayors in there, you know, and also to sort of see, uh, you pull up a manifesto, for example, you know, uh, in the Netherlands right now, uh, with the bicycle mayors, what we see is, um, and, and that's another problem here, uh, is that uh, over the years, less kids are cycling in the Netherlands. And we find, we find it very strange because technology is upcoming. So we see a lot of, uh, um, people also sort of choosing different things, uh, you know, instead of the bicycle. And I think one, one thing with the children is uh, the cargo bike, for example, they don't bike themselves anymore. So yeah, that's a different feeling, but also still the cars uh, is, is a big thing in the Netherlands. And so we are writing a manifesto with all the bicycle mayors and giving that out to the ministry and say, hey, you know, we need to change the situation because the Netherlands is losing the bicycle culture which is right. huge, of course, you yeah. know, so uh, together we can do these things as well. Yeah. 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 What's interesting too, uh, you, you mentioned the, 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 the kids uh, not riding at the same levels. Now, obviously they're, they're riding it at much greater and grander levels than what we see, you know, in other areas around the world, which is fantastic. Um, it's interesting that you mentioned the cargo bikes. Yeah. So the, there may be a correlation between, you know, the, the cargo bikes and, and the kids riding with the parents in the bigger Bakfeets type uh, cargo bikes and not making that transition as, as smoothly and quickly maybe as in the past to riding themselves. Is that, that what you're seeing? 
Yeah, and I hear it as well here in, in Amsterdam, for example, but it's not the greatest example because there are so many more examples about kids and why they do and do not write in, in different cities. But what I see here is that parents feel afraid while the situation, you know, technically improved. Uh, they feel uh, that the situ situation hasn't, and so they want to protect their kids. And, and then they think they are doing that by putting them in a cargo bike, which is a good thing on the one hand, but on the other hand, I think there should be a combination of them also have riding themselves also through busy city i have two young children myself and you know it was great riding uh, and and it feels great still you know riding with them through the city although of course we need to be aware of all the the dangers and all the things happening in the city uh, as well but i tend to sort of uh, teach them joy you know and i think that's very important because that's what sticks uh, with you the freedom that you have and going through this whole city on your own, you know, yeah, nothing can beat that, I think. Yeah. yeah and this is a good, a good other topic, I think. Yeah. 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 It's interesting too, because you, you mentioned, you know, the, the, the fears and, and the, and the sense from the parents' perspective, and that's obviously from a North American perspective, that's what uh, many parents can obviously relate to. And uh, it, it, you know, around the globe really cities around the globe that are car centric and really designed mm -hmm. around the automobile have a much farther distance to go to be able to create an environment that's that's truly safe and inviting for all ages and abilities and inc really encourages what we're looking at right here is is the youth being able to have free range of their city and have active mobility be a natural choice for them and a choice that yeah. they willingly are like, oh my gosh, yeah, this gives me the freedom to get around. Um, so it, it sounds like um, a, a big part of the vision, the dream that's embedded in that manifesto as well is, is really trying to get towards this uh, this goal of being able to uh, create an environment, support the creation of an environment that brings some of that that freedom back to children. Is that true? It is so true. And we also think that we should listen to the kids, you know, and that's basically, uh, uh, that's the, the basics behind Bicycle Heroes. Uh, it is that we think adults look at the city in a different way and also uh, well, what's in the way of making good cities is the the hand the handbooks how do you say mm -hmm. you know that the big books where they say this is the way we design the city and for example i uh, i uh, there was a kid nine-year-old kid and i asked her you know what do you think about uh when you're right to to school for example and then she was like you know there's these streets and i can't see the road because the bushes are too high you know and it's something, it's so simple, but we adults don't see it because we're just taller, you know? So and we have to invite children. It's a, a, a physical example, but it really relates. Uh, in Amsterdam right now, in the in the, in the policy making, uh, they have involved a group of 12 children and le really like learned from them a lot, you know, and put that into the new um, policy around uh, safety in cycling in Amsterdam for the coming years. And I think that's fantastic. That's a, such an amazing result, sort of be able to say, hey, we listen to the kids. We want to know where they are worried. You know, where, we want to know what they love in the city and, you know, have that conversation, ask them for their own ideas, you know, do all, of, all these things and you will make your cities better because if they can cycle, anyone can. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's great. I mean, the, the first line here is, you know, children have a unique perspective on how to solve our challenges. And it reminds yeah. me of a, a conversation I had with Tim Gill. And he's, yeah. he's he talks a lot about how, uh, yeah, you mentioned the height of a child, <laughs> you know, being able to design oh, yeah, yeah. a city and being, oh, yeah, are, are you at their level? Can you see what they're seeing? You know, get down on your hands and knees or, or get down on your knees and then sit, stand up or, you know, a perk up there and you'll be like oh this is their perspective yeah exactly <laughs> and you're also amazed about like let's say 11 year olds being so careful with four-year-olds for example they yeah. say you know our school street has changed so parents can't go uh there anymore with the car but then they secretly put the car there but you know they the, the kids the four-year-olds are in danger so they they sense 
so much more than we do, you know. And when I asked the parents, they said, you know, it's safe because the parents, they drive really slow and, you know, they know that the kid, kids are there and stuff like that. They give all these stupid arguments. And then if you think, if you ask them and say, hey, but then, you know, if this is the world we want to see and you're making it happy, by taking your kid to school, you're making it danger, dangerous for the, for the friends. And, you know, then they start thinking, ah. Oh, yeah, I think yeah. yeah it's great. And you just you just talked about school streets, and so uh, yeah. this is this is a retweet uh, from uh, Clean Cities that you, you all did like four days ago, and yeah. uh, and it's the hashtag School Streets in Europe and Streets for Kids, and it it really is reemphasizing that that you know the fact that you know our streets have have really been taken away from from children and the yeah. school streets movement talk a little bit about that concept of a school street movement that needs to to take place uh you know throughout europe and around the world yeah you see here you know marco Brunschus, for example the cycling professor right. he's really yeah. active there and and i feel philosophically very aligned with the work that he has been doing and is doing uh, around school streets uh, you know, we take the example of Bicycle Heroes work with these kids and also with the junior bicycle mayors to create different things. I was also involved in one uh, CCC action uh, yesterday here in Amsterdam. And I think, you know, seeing from Madrid, from the UK, fantastic things are happening. If I think about, um, about school streets, it's about, you know, the promise we make to kids, you know, to sort of, hey, the world is yours. We give that, right. but it's not theirs, you know. If you look at that, hey, in Amsterdam, of course, the streets are small. And when, you know, I was at this school, uh, it's like, oh, this behavior, you know, that really should change. And we can change that as a government. We can change that as a mom and dad, you know. We can do that. And it's very simple. And I think the, the concept of school streets uh, should grow, uh, and it is growing uh, rapidly. In yeah. Europe, at least. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and, and this tweet right here uh, also has a link to your, uh, yeah. your, your, uh, your newsletter. And I'll make sure that there's links to, to the newsletter there. But it looks like there's a, a report that's embedded in this particular one on school streets and, you know, to shape the child-friendly child cities. And so, yeah, it's, it's so incredibly important. And I, I think back to, um, you know, some of the challenges that cities are grappling with around the globe and it's amazing how many similarities there are you yeah. know it's like the, the the concept of you know getting kids to and from school yeah. and and we realize just how insidious the car has become in terms of making that journey um, more difficult and, and more anxiety provoking for everyone for the kids and, as well as for the parents Exactly. I was talking to a mom in Rome, for example, she had two kids and she was telling me, you know, how she couldn't have a job because she basically said, I have to take the kids to school by bus. Then I take them home. And then after they come home, they have to go to soccer, for example, and I have to take them again, you know, so she was doing that all the time and she couldn't get a job. So where was her life basically? And I was like, ah, oh, that's so different from what it should be you know right yeah and if you think about that and think about um yeah the solutions that there are it's so simple yeah yeah it's yeah. interesting too because um one of my favorite cities in the netherlands is delft it's one of the the cities that uh obviously it was it was one of the the main cities in the Netherlands that really got on board with building out a network of cycling infrastructure uh, very yeah. early on. And um, what, after spending many many days there, um, I've noticed that there there is that sense of freedom that children have there. There, you always see them, you know, yeah, going exploring their city uh, from the very young to the older kids, uh, and and obviously there's a university there too uh, in TU Delft, and so you know you've got the college age uh, you know, students there too. But it was just it, it's so amazing that contrast between that environment and a, a a much more frenetic and busier environment whether you're talking a Rotterdam or or in Amsterdam yeah. talk a little bit about that because that's the, I think there's a, there's something profound to um 
that environment, and Chris and Melissa Bruntlett talked about this in their book, uh, Curbing Traffic, um, mm-hmm. of, of the specialness in uh, a city that is just sort of calmed. <laughs> you know, it just doesn't have that 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 frenetic, noisy, busy pace that oftentimes the motor vehicles will instill into the environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's what I long for. And I think that's what a lot of cities in the Netherlands, Utrecht, uh, Amsterdam, Rotterdam, The Hague are also working on because... Of course, you know, and, and still again, as a mom, you know, for example, my my uh, 10 year old, I wouldn't send her to the shop uh, uh, a year ago, for example, because I knew she had to cross like a difficult crossing. And, right. you know, hey, it made me feel stressed, you know, yeah. and I think in the end, if we think about it a bit more deep, you know, uh, about these cities, then we already know. But, but you know what's happening? It's like, and we, I had a conversation about that yesterday. It's about how we always have that conversation about technology, how uh, mobility, and we don't see um, more than that. Yeah, that's that's the thing. It's like, hey, and we're going to solve the car by uh, by putting a battery into it and then maybe you know we can slow them down by another by to add a bit more technology so i feel like we should stop thinking like that you know and sort of see it like melissa and chris do for example and say hey you know it's possible to do this and i think a lot of aldermen, for example, in the Netherlands, they do uh, know it, um, but it's really hard because, of course, eh, from history, it has been like this. And, you know, to change that, it will not happen overnight uh, and it needs a system change. Yeah? So I think it's the whole process that needs to change as well. So and that's what we see here. But I think that's what we also see anywhere, basically. But I think what is happening now, and I, I see that in my organization right now, we work with a lot of exciting organizations like the UN and the World Bank. You know, I see them doing incredible work and becoming so much more important than, uh, you know, um, the governments, for example. Hey, so they do the actual work because they see, hey, we're here for uh, the environment. We're here for the people and we want to do the good thing, you know. So and then. The change is going to happen um, more uh, in that direction, working with the governments. But like, hey, you know, having them putting in their ideas and work as well. I think that's what we see. And I think that's fantastic. Yeah. And I pulled this from your uh, annual report. And, and again, yeah. we'll, we'll have that link in the show notes and in, in the video description below. Uh, so this is your, your impact objectives. You've got mobility, health, environment, community and economy here. And, and, and you talk a little bit about, you know, the theory of change. Expand upon this just a little bit and, and, and talk about why this is so important to your organization. I think, you know, uh, what we always have been doing and we're challenging each other on that is is a very complex thing, you know, but we really believe that the only way we can do this, yes, our, uh, our mission is 50 by 30 health of all trips by bicycle in 2030. So let's say, huh? uh, and not exactly that, but huh? let, let's say the moon show we're looking at because cities, cities are heating up, many more people are going to be living in cities by then. You know, we need to see this exponential shift of cycling. We don't want to do it for anything less, you know. So, so that's yeah the approach that we need to take. We think we should focus on something, um, yeah, that is much more effective, and we call it a human infrastructure of cycling. We think that the soft uh, side of cycling, to say it's sort of easier uh, and the communities and connecting, uh, let's say, the power of the people and the potential uh, of data. Let's connect that really well. And that is our, the way we're going to be um, yeah, making the change in the end. You know, so we have to do many things. Uh, we work on a couple of researches. We do a lot of uh, we create our own programs. So we do a lot of um, strategic advice, uh, but also we build our networks. We think a lot of things need to be done, and not only by us, but we should sort of convene uh, our organizations to work together and work on this or uh, help uh, uh, the people in our networks, basically, to do this, because that is the only way we can we can do this. 
but I really believe I see it. You know, I see that the change is happening. A couple of days ago, I saw uh, a tweet uh, from Giovanni Sayas uh, from the World Bank, and he was showing a video. I don't know if you saw it from Bogota and what was happening there. You know, so I, I see it. I see it in India as well. If you know that 50% of all the exhaust is coming from road transport, you know, and just imagine in such a big city if we can change that. Yeah, it, 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 yeah that's inc it's incredible. So, yeah, that's what drives us every day. And, you know, that's how, yeah, it's a complex thing. And, and sometimes it's hard for people to understand our theory of change or the things that we're actually doing and how do you do this. But I think we're, yeah, we're doing everything we can in the right, and, and, in the, in the right way. And I think it's also... Uh, yeah, we have the time. The moment is now, I think. And there are so many good organizations working uh, in this area. We can really get this done. And also this, uh, the, the Climate Conference COP26 is a really good example uh, of, of, of something because uh, right at that moment, uh, I went to COP every year, you know. So And this was the moment when, when for the first time, people, people started talking about active mobility. And it was well, can, I, can I interject in, in for a moment? Yeah. Because, uh, as you know, they they started that transportation week and they weren't talking about active mobility. I it know, was, I know, it was I know. Because yeah. you guys were were on the forefront and with you and and also ECF and ECF, and, yeah. and and saying no, no, we we have. <laughs> Why are you just talking about electrification of vehicles? Yeah. Yeah. It's totally true. And after that, you will really feel the change, you know, yeah. people started talking about it. Yeah. And that was really big. So for me, that was sort of a, a tipping point where people were really thinking, what are we doing here? I was inside, I was invited to, uh, uh, to uh, an event at COP and it was all about, you know, uh, technology and the new things and, you know, we're going to make this world better. And then, yeah, let's make a car that has pedals so it can go on the bike path, basically, you know. And we were like, ah, you know, <laughs> this is so funny. This is yeah. true. You know, we can't be listening at this. But then, you know, so uh, COP26 was really a tipping point. And I feel that the conversation after COP has changed totally towards active uh, transportation. And that makes me feel really positive about uh, the fact that we can do it. Maybe it didn't land uh, in, 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 you know, in the documents yet, but it will. I'm definitely sure it will. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Um, I, and, and I'm uh, quite grateful. And I, and I said this to Jill Warren as well with ECF, uh, CEO of ECF, that I was so incredibly grateful that you all were there and on it and, and, and really called these guys on it because it's like, come on, you know, it's, it's not just about the next technology whiz bang. We need to make sure that active transportation is a big part of this because if, if walking and biking and transit are, are not part of it, it's it's just not going to happen. So we thank forget you. about ourselves and the world, you know, if we don't think yeah. about that as a solution. And yeah. it's already there, you know. Think about the fact if, if we if everybody knows that if we need to replace batteries in cars now, it would take years before we could have, we could do that, you know. Yeah. And yeah. with bikes, they're here, you know, so we can do that so easily. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. the cost will be low and, the, you know, so, but you know, the whole story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So one of the things that I wanted to have you uh, address was um, because we talked a little bit about, you know, trying to engage and, and deal with getting the youth uh, activated is the youth bicycle mayor program. Talk a little mm -hmm. bit about that. Yeah, so right now it's really small, so it's in the first phase, and we got some funding from the from UMI, and uh, with that funding uh, we tend to sort of set that up in a really good way and make sure um, that we that we get the uh, the voice of youth out in a different way than we are talking about, uh, you know, the younger children, which are to us the bicycle heroes. Uh, but we really want to have like the people aged 16, 17, 18. You see Lucas Boer here. He's the bicycle mayor, the junior bicycle mayor of, of Amsterdam. Uh, he's involved in many projects, initiatives that are happening around here. And then people just ask him, you know, can you give me the perspective of you guys? You know, and then 
for example, what he did was actually um, come up with an idea for a timeline, zero to 20 years old, and sort of see where kids get on a bike or off a bike again, you know, and sort of see, could we come up with interventions that are so incredible and that we could get kids uh, cycling earlier, longer, etc. And then uh, what we did, the first thing was a pilot um, with like kids in between, uh, let's say, two and four years old. And uh, they were at the daycare and we just had 10 bikes that they could use. And the kids, like 50% of these kids could cycle uh, on their own within a month you know, and without the mom and dad being behind it. And that taught us so much. And now we're spreading that pilot through the Netherlands. And that was just an initiative of Lucas, the Junior Bicycle Mayor of Amsterdam. And so what they're also doing is sort of seeing also for the kids of their generation, but also for like the bigger themes. For him, it's good because he can easily talk. If if, if you would have a conversation with him, you know, that would work because, uh, you know, he's at a different age than a 12-year-old kid, for example. And I think having more uh, Junior Bicycle Mayors around gives us such a fresh and good perspective on cycling. And I think... Uh, uh, yeah, that that is a really great uh, uh, thing to do because if we forget about kids anywhere, then we don't uh, solve the whole problem. That's what we see in Amsterdam. For example, if we keep on putting adults to sort of solving solving the problems in the Netherlands as a whole, because that's what I know uh, have a lot about. You know, if I if we try to do that, we make books. We are we call in technicians, put in traffic lights, do all these things. But actually, we're not getting more people on bikes, you know. And if we do that and we invite the kids to do it, they'll think about the joy. They'll think about the freedom. They'll think about, you know, the exercise that they get or the the people they meet on their way home or, you know, all these other things. And I think that is so important. So that is why we think that Junior Bicycle Mayor has the potential to grow even further than the, than the Bicycle Mayor program or network we already have. So we think it has a lot of potential, but, you know, we have been on bandwidth because we are a small team. So, yeah, we need to have um, next to some funding. We also need to have uh, more people, more organizations to help us there as well. And to sort of say, hey, did you look at this? How can we do this? How can we institutionalize the program? And all these uh, things that you see in the report as well. And a question related to how do you grow? And what has happened over the over the past years? Yeah, yeah. and uh, it, and I think we also need more mayors that are bicycle mayors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so John, John uh, Mayor John uh, Botter, who's the, the mayor of Emeryville, he's he's known as the bicycle mayor because he is a mayor that firmly believes that uh, yeah. you know the, the bicycle is part of the solution that's there. Yeah. So uh, talk about that experience because every once in a while, one of the bicycle mayors, you know meets the real mayor exactly you know and it happens here and it happens everywhere and i think that's really great you know because when they get to work to work each uh, work uh, together i think um yeah when it, when someone now let me take the example of uh, mayor anidago from paris you know she really wants to see 100 uh, percent cycling in uh, for paris and it's happening and it's not happening in 50 years it's happening in three years you know so uh, if if they really want to do things they need to do it quick and if you can do quick things with cycling you can easily uh, put in bike paths you can easily put in schemes around cycling and all these things so you can you can make it happen if you go to Paris now, for example, and you think about Paris two, three years ago, yeah. whoa, that's, a, that's amazing. That is transformation. And the mayors, they can really make it happen. You know, so what I see is the mayors looking at the bicycle mayors also and say, hey, can you help me motivate other people in the city to help me, you know? And then if I do this, it's a good collaboration, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's interesting too, you mentioned uh, you know, Mayor Hildalgo, and um, I had the the good fortune of being there. And when she had her first car free day, um, I think it was September twenty ninth, uh, twenty fifteen, uh, is is when that happened. And I was I, I was just absolutely blown away by the difference. You know, the the day before 
the automobiles, you know, throughout Paris and then the day of the event on Sunday and then uh, and then the day after. And, and it's just it was so profound. But one of the things that she said leading up to that event was um, we have to change. We have to do something differently. Uh, we yeah. can't even see the Eiffel Tower through the smog. And folks that uh, have watched this channel uh, and listened to this uh, podcast have heard me <laughs> say that multiple times. And I think it is profound to, to say that multiple times. But my point here is that too often we rely on the, the leadership of, you know, the mayors and the city councils and some, you know, sometimes even a president uh, of, uh, of, a, of a country to, to yeah. be the leader and show, you know, that leadership that we need to see. Talk a little bit more about how we can do from the bottom up more of that, more actually community members going back to like that citizens, you know, uh, uh, approach of trying to, to really put really? pressure on them because, the mayors and the uh, and the senators and the representatives and the presidents, the the politicians in general, city council members, they're getting pressure from many different constituencies. How do we grow this tent uh, so that it is really profound and we start to see sort of that pressure of of community desire? Um, totally. Is starting to spill over into uh, a clear sort of message because I guess what I'm getting at here, and it's taken me way too long to get there, is that um, the the haters may need may be the minority, um, yeah. but they're loud and they're influential. They're loud and influential, but you know it takes a visionary yeah. uh, to do this. You know, and, and I think. Uh, I think it's so important to think about, we live in the times of Elon Musk buying Twitter, you know? Yeah. Uh, why is that? And if we think that maybe other camps, like let's say, sometimes we, uh, we've had a, a good example might be like, um, in some cities, people go to the bicycle mayor and sending them death wish, wishes because they don't wear a helmet, for example, you know? Or, yeah, so, so People are really uh, like that at this moment, but I think we should use it for us. So if we are able to mobilize people, if we're able to sort of use the power of the people that want to do the good thing, uh, you know, and also uh, use the potential that data has to say, you know, this is the difference that active mobility makes uh, compared to what you're now looking at. And this is the change that we together need to make. You know, I think that is the key to success as a whole. You know, we need to look at it differently and sort of not rely on, you know, what we have looked at in the past. You know, we can't do that. We can't afford that, you know, because we know it will be too late if we just re keep on relying on that. That's why all the organizations step in and say, hey, we need to take over. That's why, uh, you know, people on the street step in and say it's unequal. You know, we need to uh, we need to earn a living as well. We need to come out of depression. We need to, you know, there are so many things that the bicycle solves, you know, and I think if we are getting better at telling that uh, to the people that can be in the community, let's say the citizens network that we're building, for example, but also, um, you know, to the politicians, I think that is a, a really good thing. The, the, uh, the example I gave you from Aradi Carion, the bicycle mayor of Mexico City, changing this uh, uh, this law around uh, safety, you know, right. that's you. It's like they have to take up against the car lobby. Yeah. So that is the best example I could give you of, of power, you know. Right, and it right. wasn't sure until a couple of weeks ago, so it's really fresh. I, I yeah, I admire these people. They just they are just people like you and me, and they changed the law. Right. And they yeah. can do it. You and me can do so many things together. Yeah. yeah. The other thing that, too, it, it, I know in the UK, they just had uh, elections there. And, and I noticed on Twitter just a, a lot of activity around um, the low traffic networks, the LT, LTNs, the low traffic neighborhoods and yeah. uh in the slow streets uh initiatives and and you know, really you know kind of i think that was all stemming off of a lot of the 20s plen uh, plenty you know campaigns 
And uh, it, it started to be like literally a platform, a political platform of, you know, uh, you know, at the ballot box, you know, who, uh, you know, are you on record? Are you supportive of this or are you on the side of dangerous streets and dangerous neighborhoods? And yeah. so I think inevitably that might be an early indication that um, we're, we're making some progress. We are. And I think what we see there is incredible. Two, three years ago, I was at a UN conference in uh, Switzerland. And then I saw this example of there was a girl, for, first girl sort of officially uh, on her death certificate was that it was uh, from air pollution, you know, in London. Right. And so that was a good example of things happening. And by then also what you saw was the house prices, pricing were dropping in the streets where there were, where was lots of traffic, you know. So you saw the wish and the will of things to change and then over COVID some things changed but not permanently and some things, right. uh, things were taken back but then you saw all the amazing groups and the work that they're doing and the governments and everything that was changing and was changing the, the voice so uh, so quickly like Adam Tranter a former bicycle mayor of Coventry was also really involved and he's creating the Bike is Best campaign and I advise yeah. you to look at that it's exciting some really good stuff in that Bike his best campaign is fantastic and and again i'll be sure to have the uh, uh those links in the show notes and in, in the video description below uh and what's great about the bike is best you know campaign is it's visual it's engaging it's video it's it's really you know it's got some really really good stuff and it and yeah it's i think that these are the types of things that that i've been looking for is is really trying to help grow that movement from the bottom up and yeah. that gives cover to those leaders because not not every city and not every area is structured in such a way where the strong leader can can dictate what happens you know mm -hmm. oftentimes in many cities it's it's much more you know, collaborative and a, a demo democratic debate, and you know, and 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 the Netherlands is is like that as well. I mean, some of some of the crucial votes that took place back in the seventies were by one a margin of one. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think, and it's different everywhere. But I I think what we what you just said, uh, what's happening in the UK, for example, is amazing. I see it in Italy. I see it right. in India. Uh, we see it in. Like I mentioned, uh, Bogota or Lima or Mexico City or so many cities There's are one already in Ecuador. Doing... <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is today. I'm on the Padilla. Yeah, it's really like makes me so happy to see all these things happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fantastic. Is there yeah. anything that we haven't covered yet that you want to make sure uh, we leave the audience with? Hmm. I think the bicycle is the simplest solution to the world's most complex urban problems. Yeah. And I think we all know, you know, that's why we're looking at your uh, fantastic series, you know. I, I But yeah, it, it definitely, yeah, what you were looking at as well, and we're looking at this, uh, at this as well, is how can we sort of make that exponential shift together? And so I want to call on everyone and say, hey, if you want to do something, uh, stand up, uh, come to our organization, for example, and uh, either become a bicycle mayor, find one in your city, or... Uh, a citizen or come to you and make a show you know there are so many things that we need to do together and i think the time is now if we can do that uh then uh, yeah we're being um change makers and and that's we we can see i i, I want to say we can see the change we want to see basically yeah 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 good stuff it was great to, to be here and have this conversation with you yeah, yeah. I, I do have one last question here for you. It's more logistical in the sense that um, as somebody who's been involved in advocacy work for you know many, many years, I've seen organizations go through peaks and valleys and uh, and and personal energy also, you know, peak and then wane. How, how does how does that work for? Um, you know, for your organization and for specifically like a, a, an individual like the bicycle mayor, um, you know, how how does the next mayor come on board? It's not like there's a, an election held every two years. Uh, so how, how does that how, how do we make sure that your representatives that, that are out there are, um, are are stepping up and saying, you know what, I, I, I think it's time for me to pass the <laughs> the mayorship on to somebody else. How does that work logistically? 
I think people also feel that, you know, so they feel that either they have personal reasons, but most, mostly they think, you know, uh, my time is up and I think that I have done this and maybe it's time to, to sort of stay and take another t- extra two years. So we have this open conversation where we really look at what, what is the impact that you are making right now? Is there more to be made uh, with you as a bicycle mayor or should we move on to another bicycle mayor and find um, people there. What we also did, by the way, was organ- uh, um, set up a bicycle counselor program, for example, in the larger cities where we have, like in Mumbai, for example, we have uh, uh, 53 bicycle counselors. So it's not one mayor, but it's also in the uh. wards people helping out the bicycle mayor because you can imagine that, like one bicycle mayor isn't yes. enough. And so what well, we it's see also, is it's, it also can feel overwhelming too. It can feel overwhelming, you know, because yeah. you can't imagine all the the people from the media coming to the bicycle right. mayor and then the people from the government and then the citizens and everyone wants something. And still it's a voluntary task, you know, so it's not <laughs> right. a day. And sometimes it feels like it's a 24-7 job as well. So, you know, of course, uh, people have to have the energy. And, of course, uh, when they feel the time is up, basically, uh, we always come up with a solution and find someone else in the city. And whether in the example of Mumbai, that is a a counselor or it could be someone else, I don't know, you know. So we always have a conversation and try to make a – there's no – that's the thing about the Bicycle Mayor Network and that's what's – yeah, sometimes complex about it, but also very interesting is that there's no one size fits all. It's not a robotic system. We look at the cities, we look at the people, we try to gather as much information as we can, and then we try to make the best uh, decisions um, that we can together with all our people and organizations. But it's fun. It's amazing. And I think, yeah, about six to seven years when we came up with the idea, we never thought it would be like this. And yeah, it's, it has been such an adventure and such a great thing and a blessing that all these people are doing this, you know. So yeah. um, I'm going to tell you something. I won this year. I won a UN uh, World Bicycle Day Award, and I'm going to give that to all the people in our networks because they are amazing. Yeah. Well, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you so very much for joining me on the Active Towns podcast. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. It was a... It was so nice to be here. Thank you all so much for tuning into this episode with Maude DeVries with the Bikes Organization. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, uh, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, <laughs> leave a comment down below and share it with a friend. And if you haven't done so already, I'd be honored to have you subscribe to the channel. Uh, just click on that button down below and ring that notifications bell to select your notifications preferences. And be sure to pop over to the Active Town store to check out some of my fun uh, Streets Are For People swag that I have out there. Uh, your purchases really do help me out. Um, don't make a ton of money with it, but it helps support the channel and keep things moving forward as does becoming a patron. So if you're finding value from this channel and would like to help support my efforts, uh, please become a patron. (laughs) It doesn't matter how much, you know, a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, whatever fits your budget. Uh, If you are getting some value out of these videos, uh, your support of this channel is what keeps this happening and keeps this moving along. So again, any support is very much appreciated. And uh, if you cannot afford to to make a financial contribution, hey, just spread the word. Let's grow this movement to create a culture of activity. Okay, well, that's it for now. This is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. Cheers.